I ran the create control. F I ran the create control. F God, I'm going to struggle with that eye. Database recovery, and in this particular, a particularly sort of um, awkward form of database recovery. Here's the question that came in. Is it possible to restore an Oracle database from just the DBF files recovered from a failed Linux machine? Now, it's a fairly vague sort of question, but it's one of those things where you, you, know, you may have stumbled across a, a machine. It obviously had an Oracle database running at some way, shape, or form, but you don't you, know, you might not know anything about it. Typically from the file structure, you might know what the name of the database is, but generally you might just have the data files or it might have the data files and the control files, etc. My response to this question when it came in was, well, maybe you might be able to get it back and you might not. As I said, it's a bit of a vague question. There's a lot of possible scenarios. You know, what if the database was actually shut down before this machine was just ripped off the shelf and thrown on the scrap heap? Well, you might have a bit of luck in that sense. What if the database was simply switched off, or sorry, the machine was simply switched off, or at some point, no one even knew there was an Oracle database running on it. I've worked in IT departments in the past where it's amazing how server kitchens just to float around, sits in the back of the computer room somewhere, and eventually someone goes, what's that for? It's often the case also that the machines that you don't know what they're doing are the ones that when you switch off, everything goes to hell in your data center. And there are other scenarios. Do I have just the database files? Do I have the control files? Do I have the redo logs? Do I have the init.oras, et cetera? There's a various permutations here that we need to consider. So that's why I said maybe, but I thought I'd cover a couple of possible scenarios on that premise of you've simply discovered a server lying in the on the floor in the, in the data center somewhere, and you've switched it on, and you see that there are actually some Oracle sort of data files floating around. How do you actually see what's in them? How do you get that database back up and running? I'm going to start with a database called Dunk. And there's no particular name special for the name Dunk. It's more the fact that it's a database of junk. Because what we're going to do is we're going to look at if we have a cold copy of the data files, can we restore it? Or if we have a hot copy of the data files, i.e. the machine, the database was not cleanly shut down, at which point this machine was simply maybe powered off. And we're going to try to restore it into a database called Junk. And that's why I came up with the name Dunk. Simply, it's a simple translation to a junk database. And I'm calling it Junk not just for comic effect. I'm calling it Junk because whenever you have to restore a database that you don't really know what the contents are, you don't know what state it was in, it's important not to restore it, get it open, and then just go, oh, great, now we can start using it. Generally, when you don't know the background of a database, I would look at restoring it and then looking at doing things like, for example, using data pump to unload all the data, et cetera. Trying to get it to a new database where you have more greater levels of control. In that way, you're not gonna have a noose around your neck drifting off into the future. You might have this database up and running for several months and all of a sudden it crashes with an R600 because you didn't restore one of the files that's now needed, et cetera. So it's always good if you have some sort of unsurety about the, the source of a database file and, and its quality, Unload it with data pump when you're done, just to make sure you've now got a clean baseline and you're ready to go. So this is just VirtualBox running, I think of Oracle 19, I might be, what have I got? 19.12, I'm just looking at the title of the, of the window. It's probably, so it's probably running about 19.12 or, or something later. I'm in a directory called cold here. What I did was I took a cold backup of this database called dunk, and I took a cold backup of just the data files. I'm going to run restore and it's going to do the entire demo for us. So the first thing I'm going to do is just in case this instance called junk was running, I kill it off. So it's just not there. Then I'm going to remove all the files. So all the files that were in U01 app Oracle Aura data junk, I've simply removed them. And now I'm going back into my cold directory and restoring just the data files. So you can see here, now that I think I'm pausing here, the only files I've restored simply copied back into place where the database should be are these ones, sysorg, system, undo, and users. To keep this uh, running relatively quickly, I made a very small database. It's not a container database because this way the number of files and their sizes is very, very small. Makes the demo nice and quick for you. So this was done from a cold backup. I simply shut the database down and I copied the data files somewhere. If you find a machine like this, it's trivial to get this database back up, even if you have no control files because all the control file really does is nominate where to find the rest of the files in your database. Over time, the control file can contain other information. It contains 
things like your RMAN catalog, if you're not using it, that stuff will disappear if, if you're just creating a control file from scratch. But if you've just got the data files, the basic control file structure is simply to nominate where to find the rest of the database. So let's do that. I've got the standard stuff already preceded there. So I've simply, I've already got the init junk.ora and I've got a password file. These can be created just with Aura password command. And obviously you can just use your favorite text editor to create yourself a basic init.ora. So they're already there. The first thing I do is start up no mount. That's the only option you have if you don't have a control file. Because normally when you start the database up, it tries to go into what we call a mount state, which is use the control file to go find the data files. If you haven't got a control file, you can't mount the database. So the only thing you can do is do a startup no mount. For those that are unfamiliar with this, sort of, this um, evolution of startup, no mount simply says, create all the memory structures and processes used to run a database, but that's all. It doesn't actually reach out to the database files themselves. It has no knowledge besides the init.ora file and perhaps the password file to connect. So I've started up this database in no mount form. In fact, you can see I've set the RAM very, very low because it's a small VM. And this is all we have to do. We have to simply manually create one of these create control file commands. I cheated. I simply, before I shut my database down, I backed up the control file to trace. So I had the nice text version, but you could literally use VI or any Vim, et cetera, to simply create this. I'm simply setting my database to a name named junk. Even though I backed it up a database called dunk, by using the set database command, I'm effectively assigning a new name to it. I'm choosing reset logs because I don't have any redo logs. I did a cold backup. The reader logs might be there, but they're gone, we're assuming in this instance. All I have was the data files. So reset logs will actually create me some, some new reader logs. I nominate where I want my reader logs to be, and then I simply list the four data files that I've restored from tape, from wherever, or simply put back into the right location. If I found those files already in the right location, I don't even have to restore them like I did in this script here. I simply have to nominate a control file as to where they are. I run that. And what that does is the database has now gone from a no mount state, which is just the memory and the processes, to what we call a mounted state, because I've told the database where the data files will be. In fact, do I print it out? Yeah. If I do select open mode from video the database, we've transitioned now from no mount to mount state. And then it's just alter database open reset logs. What reset logs does is effectively look at these control files and says, these are the three new reader logs I'm going to create. Now, what's missing from a control file? We have the redo logs, we have the data files. If you need to sort, obviously we need a temporary table space. And so all I need to do now is alter table space spent, add a temp file. Now I can do some sorting. If I didn't know what the name of the table space was, I could simply do a select star from V dollar table space or DBA table spaces because my database is now open in the normal way and then add myself a temp file and we're done. So the easiest way when you have a database which was cold backed up, and you only have the data files, it's trivial. Manually create a control file with some a text editor and you're away and running. Your database is up. There was no database recovery required because the database was shut down in a nice clean fashion and you are off and running. That database is fine. So this is the exact same example, except this time when I copied my database files, I didn't shut the database down. So they're basically not good, clean copies of the files. Let's see what happens. As before, the demo, I'm killing the existing instance, so it's gone. I'm going to remove all the data files, so they're all gone, and I'm restoring these four files. So it looks exactly like the cold demo, except these four files were simply copied out of the database without the database being shut down. So they're not good, clean backups. But there's my four files restored. Let's go through the same process. I've got my standard prereqs as before. I've got my init junk.ora, my password file there unchanged. Let's first of all, start the database in no mount again because there is no control file. My job is to create that. So I've got this one started in no mount state. I create my control file. It looks exactly the same as before. I'm doing reset logs as well. And the control file gets created fine. See, at this point, the database hasn't gone and looked at those data files. It simply said, you're telling me where they are. It doesn't know that they're not great quality. They weren't nice and cleanly backed up. So it's going to let you happily create the control file. The database is mounted as before. Let's try open reset logs. And the database says, this is the first time I've gone and looked at the headers of those data files, and they're all over the shop. They're not all in sync. Each one has perhaps a different SCN, and therefore the databases need to be recovered to bring them into alignment. At this point, I'm in a bit of trouble because I only have the data files. If I can find the archive logs, great. I could then roll them forward in a normal way, but there's no archive logs here. I've got nothing. And this is where 
you have some dramas. If someone's just switched the machine off, there's a good chance you're not going to find all the information you need. What do you do? Well, I'll just try to do a recover. So recover database using backup control file, because this is not it's being run as a script, not interactive, it automatically tried to find the next archive file. If it was there, great, I would have been fine. I could have rolled forward and hopefully recovered, but it's not, I've lost the archives. There are no archives. And so as it came up archive and it simply canceled my recovery, I'm still stuck. I can't open my database because the databases are no longer in sync. Before you do this, and I'll come back to this in the slides as well, you pause, you shut everything down and you perhaps take a copy of all your data files such that you know where you are at. You have a baseline, but then you can start looking, as I put here, only under the advice of Oracle support. We allow some certain parameters that will let you get a database open bypassing the normal checks. This is simply one of such parameters. You can have various scenarios in which you need to set other parameters depending on things like the quality of your system table space or your undo table space, etc. Uh, whether there are some corrupted rollback segments, etc. There are various hidden parameters that we allow under the guidance of Oracle support to get your database open to at least get you something. Here's an alternate init.org parameter called init corrupt instead of init junk. And I've added this hidden parameter to let my database open even though it's no longer logically consistent. So I'll start up force no mount this time with this new init.org parameter which is going to let me effectively open my database in a broken state. Okay, so my system has come up in no mount state. I do alter database mount. I was simply being lazy here because I'd already had the control file put in place. I ran the create control. I ran the create control. God, I'm going to struggle with that. Aren't I? I ran the create control file command in the previous time. That control file was still sitting there. So I can just do alter database mount and I can do alter database reset logs because I am allowing reset corruption to be true. But as I prompted here, I cannot stress enough, there is a difference between a database being open and a, different, and a database being open and in a giant mess. I've taken the database here and said, the various files are no longer consistent with each other. So even for example, within a single table space, it might well be the case that one table, which spans multiple data files, because extents might span data files, might be able to read half the table, the other half might be totally hogwash. Or even worse, you might be able to read the table cleanly, but it actually represents different points in time. The two things that are important at this exercise is not just, oh, look, Connor showed me a hidden parameter. Let's just throw that in our system when we have trouble getting our database open. The first thing is you never do any of these kind of things without talking to support first. I should have switched this text around. So you always talk to support first, get their guidance. And what I meant there by do not go backwards is it's amazing how many people will have a problem, whether they just found a server in the data center or they've got a problem getting their database open. And they'll try five or six things first. And then when they failed, they'll phone support. But sometimes those five or six things are the, the actions that have actually made your database unrecoverable by anyone. Whenever you get this point where your database can't be opened, Generally, what I do is I shut the database down, shut down abort such that I'm not touching any data files and I'll copy what I've got there somewhere else if possible. Now, if it's a 20 terabyte database, that might not be feasible, but I'm trying to get a point where I've got a baseline where if I can always come back to here, I can come back to the point at which I started tackling my problem. Because if you don't do that and you go ahead and do five or six things, it might well be the case that you'll finally get to support with a SEV one and they'll go, ah, oh, that thing you did in step three, yeah, that's totally screwed us. We can't do anything now. So be aware of that. Always get to that point where you can't, we, you don't make the problem worse. In fact, I think there's a, a NASA quote. I was watching an interview with an astronaut and he was saying, whenever we have a problem on the space shuttle or the space station, they said, we always pause because there is no single problem that cannot be made worse. And that's true. So don't go backwards and always talk to support first. If you do have a database, which even with these hidden parameters, you cannot get open, Oracle Support actually does have even more low level emergency facilities. What they will do is they can actually have, we have some programs that will actually read your blocks, block by block and extract the data out. At which point then you'd be up into a full reload of your database to probably with things like SQL Loader, cause it's just gonna come out as flat data. But be aware, we do have some very low level facilities in those absolute dire emergency situations. I think you might be charged a fee to engage services to do that, but 
you know, in the worst case scenario, it is possibly to get that data back. Whilst I appreciate any data, database questions, be aware that we also have a dedicated database backup and recovery office hours held by the database backup and recovery PMs. And there, if you ever have a problem with recovery or backup, please jump into their office hours because these are the experts. They'll be able to go through your RMAN scripts, give you advice as to where they're failing, et cetera. Uh, so we got some, you know, some dedicated specialists on backup and recovery with their own office hours run every month. So I, I'll happily tackle any question you throw at me, but be aware that we have extra special specialists floating around on particular topic areas.